Yeah, so good afternoon to you all. Hello? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. So, a couple of the problems are remaining, so we'll try to complete uh, now. So, maybe take, you can take up another sum. Uh, that is in a CU bar test on a normally consolidated clay. So a sample consolidated under a stress of 200 kN per square meter failed at an additional axial stress of 150 kPa. The pore pressure at failure was 75 kPa. Determine analytically the shear strength parameters both in terms of the total and effective strength, effective stresses. So what are the values of principal stress ratio sigma 1 by sigma 3 and sigma 1 dash by sigma 3 dash at pay to calculate the value of AF. Okay. So having read the sum, so what is your uh, first impression about the statement of the sum? Consolidated undrained test with a measurement of pore pressure, pore water pressure, was conducted on a normally consolidated clay. So the moment you say this one, so what is the first thing that should come to the mind? So both the failure planes pass through origin. Both the planes passes through origin. So that means, so C dash is equal to C U is equal to zero because. This is normally consolidated clay and you are consolidating the soil sample and you are doing so consolidated undrained test with a pore pressure measurement. That means so the CL strength parameters remained are so pi u and pi dash. So these are the two CL strength values that you are asked to determine. So now look at the data. Uh, a sample was consolidated under a stress of 200 kilopascals. So sigma 3 is 200 kPa, 200 kPa, and failed at an additional axial stress of 150. So that means sigma D is 150 kPa, 150 kPa. The pore pressure at failure. So was UF, so that is uh, 75 kilopascals. 75 kilopascals. So this is the data. So now uh, it is quite easy. All parameters are known. So sigma 1 is nothing but so sigma D plus sigma 3, that is 200 plus 150, so this is 350 kilopascals. So the major principal stresses in terms of the total stresses are sigma 1 is 350, sigma 3 is 150 kilopascals. Since pore water pressure has been given, so sigma 1 dash is equal to sigma 1 minus u, so that is 350 minus 75. So how much is this one? Two. So 275 kPa. 275 kPa. Similarly, sigma 3 dash is equal to sigma 3 minus u. So sigma 3 is 200. So minus 75. So this is 125 kPa. So now we have all the stress uh, principal stress values in terms of the total and in terms of the effect. So the next step is, so anyhow C dash and CU are zero. The effective cohesion and undrained cohesion values are zero because the soil is a normally consolidated clay. So then how do you determine the pi dash and pi u? 
सिग्मा वन माइनस साइन फाइव इक्वल टू सिग्मा वन माइनस सिग्मा टू यू यू द ज्यामेट्रिक प्रिंसिपल फ्रॉम द मोहर सर्किल ओके सो यू एनीबॉडी हैज एनी कंफ्यूजन स्टिल सो जस्ट सो दिस इज द इक्वेशन स्टेट में बेस्ड ऑन द ज्यामेट्रिक वी कैन राइट सिग्मा वन माइनस सिग्मा थ्री डिवाइडेड बाय Sigma one plus sigma three. Also, this is in terms of the effective stress. Similarly, so sine pi u, that is unbranded position, is so sigma one minus sigma three divided by sigma one plus sigma three. So the friction angle in terms of the effective stress and the friction angle in terms of the unbranded. So that is total stress. So please tell me the values of the pi dash and pi u. So pi is fifteen point eight three and pi dash is twenty two degrees. Okay. So pi dash is twenty two degree and pi u is fifteen degree. Okay. Now make an important so, uh, observation. It's otherwise, I think. No, no. This is correct. Oh, sir. No, no. This is correct. So. The effective, uh, yeah, yeah, it's correct, it's correct. Because effective has the more slope, yeah. Uh, this is correct. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That, Sir. Right. Yeah. But uh, in Indonesia, you have written a phi u equal to phi d equal to question mark. Oh, you need to determine these two values. Okay, sir. You are asked to determine phi u value and phi dash value. Okay. Now. Let us make an important observation here. See, uh, did I change the soil from total to the effective? Can you repeat? Is there any change in the soil, soil type? So from effective to the total, or total to the effective? Yes, sir. It's always in CU test. It's a CU test. Okay. The first important thing is that same soil, but exhibiting the two different values of the friction angle. So this is the very interesting thing that you must note down. How can the same thing? So same thing happens in CD test also. Now how it differs from the CU test? Uh, I had this confusion long time, a long time now. Okay, no, no. So there is there is no difference. Both are same. So both are produced with the same results. Whether you conduct the CU bar test or CD test, only thing is that uh, in CD test you will not get the undrained position or undrained friction angle. What you get ultimately only the C dash and pi dash. There was no undrained condition because undrained condition is there during the failure or during the shearing condition. So that's why in CU bar test both the parameters are positive. Sir, I am not getting what you say, sir. See, his question is, when you conduct the CD test, you still get the C dash value, pi dash value, and when you are also saying that when I conduct the CU bar test, you are still getting the C dash value, pi dash value. So how it is possible? So the answer is, when you conduct the consolidated drain test. What you get is only the effective strength parameter, C dash and pi dash. This is because you are allowing the pore pressure dissipation during the consolidation as well as during the shearing stage. But in consolidated undrained test, you are maintaining both. You are converting from drain to the undrained condition. So drain condition during the consolidation, undrained condition during the shearing. So therefore. You will get both drained parameters and the undrained parameters. And sir, what about U U? In U U, you will get only the undrained. There was no drain. Sir, you in U U we also have a pi dash effective. No, no, that is not possible. Because in UU you are no way allowing the water to dissipate, as sir. No way you are allowing the pore pressure to dissipate. So effective is not at all possible. It is unconsolidated under. 
Okay. So now for the same normally consolidated plane, see the shift in the angle of internal friction. Initially it is 15 degree, but it is rose to 22 degree. How this is possible? How for the same soil increment of the internal friction is possible? So because it exceeds the pre-consolidation uh, stress. Because uh, the stresses uh, exceed the pre-consolidation stress, so the soil changes from the over-consolidated clay to the normally consolidated clay. Okay. Fine. A any other analysis by anybody? Okay. See, uh, try to understand. Now, consolidated undrained test. During the consolidation, what is happening within the soil sample? During the consolidation, what is happening inside the soil sample? Dissipation of pore pressure. So, dissipation of the pore pressure by expelling out the water. So consequently, there is a volume change. When there is a volume change, when that means in the form of a dissipation of the pore pressure, the particles are getting rearranged during the consolidation. So that's what you understood from the theory of the consolidation. When particles are getting rearranged, what is happening? What is the obvious consequence of a rearrangement? Which parameter should improve? So as we understood initially that C dash and C U are zero. But if you look at the shear strength parameters, we have only two, either cohesion or the angle of internal friction. And for normally consolidated soil, we concluded that C dash and C U are zero. So therefore, the readjustment of the particle, readjustment of the particle within the soil sample, or as a result of the consolidation, reflects in the form of increase in the pore pressure parameter, sorry, increase in the angle of internal friction. Okay, so that's why you always get higher value of the angle of internal friction with respect to effective as compared with the undrained condition. So I hope it is clear to everyone. So next, you are asked to determine the ratio. So sigma 1 by sigma 3 so in terms of the total and sigma 1 dash by so sigma 3 dash so in terms of effective so try to find it out the ratio of these two and the last one is uh, to determine the calculate the value of af calculate the value of af here the sample is fully consolidated so the sample is fully consolidated so sorry fully saturated although it is consolidated but that is up to certain extent. There is a sub decrement in the water content. Okay, but you are still maintaining the degree of saturation of unity. So B is equals to 1. So as you are maintaining the SR of 100%. As long as you maintain the degree of saturation of 100%, fully saturation within the soil sample, so your value of the B becomes 0. So your delta U, the net pore water pressure is nothing but, so B into delta sigma 3 plus A into, so delta sigma 1 minus, so delta sigma 3. So this is the equation. Okay, so this is the equation. So this equation encompasses the pore pressure development both during the consolidation and during the deviated stress application. So here, since the degree of saturation is 100%, so B is 1. So we can rewrite this equation as, so delta U is nothing but, so delta, so sigma 3 plus A into, so delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3. So our requirement is A. So R, this can be written as the pore pressure parameter at the final. So this can be written as delta U minus delta sigma 3 
divided by so delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3 okay now so what was the change so delta there is a change in the delta u the four pressure parameter so at failure is 75 kilo pascals 75 kilo pascals but so when the d matrix stress is applied d matrix stress is applied so the cell pressure is remained constant the cell pressure is remained constant therefore so your delta 3 delta sigma 3 becomes zero as there is no change in cell pressure no change in sigma c so delta sigma 3 is zero because you did not change the sigma 3 value that is remained constant at 200 kilo pascals so therefore af can be written as so simply the power pressure at final divided by so delta sigma 1 so this is uh, uf is 75 75 and this is 150 dv stress so whatever you get it uh, af is 0 0.5 so, 0.5. so the value of final pole sorry the value of the pole pressure parameter af is 0 0.5 now i know that there is some kind of a confusion so a and a bar so let us look at the next sum so that clears out uh, your doubts Okay, so I am retaining this as, as it is. So, in order to clear your doubt with regard to A and A bar, so let us look at the another sum, the next sum. Uh, in a triaxial test, a soil sample was consolidated under a cell pressure of 700 kN per square meter and a back pressure of 350 kPa. Thereafter, with drainage not allowed, the cell pressure was raised to 800 kilopascal, resulting in the increased pore water pressure reading of 445 kilopascals. The axial load was then increased to give a deviated stress of 575 kilopascals, while the cell pressure remained at 800 kilopascals and a pore pressure reading of 640 kilopascal. Calculate the pore pressure coefficients B and A. Now, if you recall, our one of the previous class discussion. Here in this sum, a back pressure of 350 kilo pascal is applied. So what is the primary purpose of applying the back pressure? Why should we apply the back pressure? In order to saturate the function. Very good. So, in order to saturate the soil sample, so we apply the back pressure and see also, see also the magnitudes of the cell pressure and back pressure. When a back pressure of 350 kilopascals is applied, the cell pressure of 700 kilopascal is maintained. Okay, back pressure is applied internally within the soil, while cell pressure is applied externally over the membrane. So, when you apply 350 kilopascals internally, so just uh, the same thing shall be represented schematically. So you are applying a back pressure of back pressure of 300 kp, and this has to counteract counteract a cell pressure of 700 kilopascals. So just imagine if the back pressure is not counteracted by cell pressure of higher magnitude. Then, so this back pressure can disrupt the entire soil sample. Forget about the saturation. So your sample will not withstand at all. So therefore, whenever you try to saturate the soil sample by applying a back pressure, so by applying a back pressure, you must ensure that first we have applied the cell pressure, then we have applied the back pressure. Then only you can able to saturate the soil sample. 
which otherwise literally it is impossible and uh, in reality so when you do any kind of a test in the laboratory so it is practically not possible directly to apply the 350 kilo pascals or 700 kilo pascals of the sulfur so it they will be applied in a phase wise so initially we may apply 50 kilo pascals of the back pressure and 100 kilo pascals of the sulfur pressure so this will be maintained for some time so that it will be increased so in a proportion like 100 150 around 100 200 then 150 300 then 200 400 so on and so forth so the way you understand but the proportionality you must maintain so at any point of the or at any stage of the triaxial testing the sample should not get wasted and you must apply so this back pressure until you are achieving the b value of 1 so that represents that the soil sample is fully saturated now fundamentally if you look at the statement of this sum it indicates that the moment you apply the pore pressure means so sorry back pressure means the sample is initially in a partially saturated state so here now since the sample is uh, partially saturated so the a bar pressure a bar comes into the picture a bar comes into the picture now let us look at the sum so here what we have done Uh, we applied 350 kilo pascals of back pressure against 700 kilo pascals of the cell pressure, and therefore uh, thereafter, with drainage not allowed, the cell pressure was raised to 800 kilo pascals. So when the cell pressure raised from 700 to 800 kilo pascals, it increased the pore pressure to 445 kilo pascals. Or at the cell pressure of 800 kilo pascal your pore pressure reading is 445 kilo pascal 445 kilo pascal now so this the, this data so this is simply confined into only the cell pressure and back pressure so therefore this data is sufficient to calculate the b value because if you look at the definition of the p so this is delta u divided by delta sigma 3 what was the change in the pore pressure parameter as a result of the application of the sun pressure so now can you able to tell me so from where to where the pore pressure got increased what would be the numerator and what would be the denominator anyone what was the initial pore pressure and what was the final pore pressure What is the initial pore pressure? So three fifty. Three fifty. Okay. So what is the final? Four forty five. So four forty five. Four forty five. Sorry. So final four forty five minus so three fifty divided by. So what was the change in cell pressure? The hundred kilo pascal. Hundred kilo pascal. That is. Final 800 to initial 700. So this is 45 plus 50. So 95 by 100. Yes, sir. 0.95. So 95 by 100. So 0.95. So now we can ensure that the sample is fully saturated since B is more than 0.9. Okay. but as the sample is initially unsaturated so here we can directly calculate a bar so a bar is equals to so delta u d divided by so delta so sigma d delta u d divided by delta sigma d. so what was the increment of deviator stress that is second statement 
the axial load was then increased to give a deviator stress of 575 kilopascals while the cell pressure remained at 800 kilopascals there was no change in so cell pressure and a pore pressure reading of 640 kilopascals okay so initially it was at 445 so now when the axial the deviator stress was increased to 575 So uh, the final force pressure is six part. So the change in pressure, force pressure, as a result of application of deviator stress is six part minus four part five divided by this is whole value. The deviator stress is five seventy five. Five seventy five. Okay. So this is. What is the value of P bar? Zero point three four. So zero point three four. So now A bar can be written as so A into B. Suppose if you want to determine A, so this is A bar by so zero point three four divided by zero point nine four. 0.36. Okay. So now these two sums will give you very clear idea. So where to calculate or where to use A, A F, and A bar. Sir. Yeah. One confusion, sir. So when we apply the base water pressure, so soil is getting saturated, sir, fully saturated. So it it says that V value should be equal to one, na, sir. Usually, getting V value one is really tough. It's not possible. It's possible, but it takes immense amount of time. So therefore, normally, whenever V exceeds zero point nine, we presume that the sample is fully saturated. Yes, sir. In this question, if they haven't mentioned anything about uh, increasing uh, cell pressure, so at that time for calculation we can take B equal to one, sir. Like in previous question. Yeah, yeah, that is true. If they have not mentioned, then you can assume. Okay. So now we can go to the next sum. The results of a series of CU bar test. on undisturbed samples of an over consolidated clay bar as below cell pressure deviator stress at failure and pore water pressure at failure so everything has been given Please read the statement one or two times. See also the data once, and just let me know what is your understanding about the data. First of all, what is the test here? So C U bar test, and what kind of the soil it is? OC clay. OCR. So OC clay. OC clay. So CU bar test on OC clay. Now the moment I talk about OC clay, so what fundamental points we should recall? So in terms of the shear strength parameters. Can we have both C and pi, or only C and pi? Sorry, only C or pi. So both are possible. So C and pi. So both are possible because this is over consolidated. Now, also look at the data. 
have you ever seen in any of the previous sum the pore water pressure value of the negative no sir but in oc oc soil you, you should see the pore pressure parameters of the negative initially minus 45 minus 15 then down to the positive plus 50 plus 110 now if you also recall the basic shear strength theory for oc for normally consolidated and over consolidated clay for over consolidated there is a continuous increment only so if you have seen the pore pressure parameters so in oc there is a continuous uh, decrement sorry in what nc but for oc it is positive then comes to the negative Or this is negative, so this is positive. Whatever it is, yeah. So this is delta U. So if you look at the variation in the pore pressure for normally consolidated or over consolidated, you notice this kind of the profile for these two different kind of the soils. So what do you mean by the initial positive? Our initial negative for OC dilation. Dilation. Our other way around up. The dilation is in terms of the volume change. Okay, the dilation is in terms of the volume change. But the basic meaning of the positive and negative is that positive indicates that the soil is able to uh, sorry the water is able to bear the load. Negative means. the water is not able to bear the load rather the negative is causing the soil to withstand recall recall all previous classes so here it is a negative value in case of the over consolidated clay it's not positive so at the initial phase of the over consolidated or when you subject reaction testing on over consolidated clay so the soil so some kind of affinity to absorb the water that so it is a negative while in nc clay so the water directly takes the applied flow in case of the nc so that's what is the meaning of this positive and a negative sir if uh, yes. pore water pressure is negative that means if active stress is increasing so that will be good na sir that will be good So it's a good only. Okay. So determine the shear strength parameters in terms of the effective stresses. Plot the variation of AF with the over consolidation ratio. If the free consolidation stress of the clay is 700 kilonewton per square meter. So all the data has been given. So make a columns. So sigma 3F has been given. Sigma one minus sigma three f has been given. The four pressure parameter has been given. So calculate sigma one, sigma one f, sigma one dash f, sigma three f, and sigma three dash f. So everything is possible. So if you uh, draw the Mohr circle, so you will get C dash value as thirty kilopascals. C dash of thirty kilopascals and pi dash of twenty five degrees. So try at home. So don't forget. And you are asked to draw the AF versus or consolidation ratio. So a relationship between AF versus OCR. So here the OCR or consolidation ratio is defined as the free consolidation pressure. So free. Consolidation pressure, so divided by cell pressure, divided by the cell pressure. So cell pressures are different values. So we have a cell pressure of 100, 200, 400, 600, but pre-consolidation pressure is only 700 kilonewton per square meter. That is constant value. And you may also need to calculate the AF parameter, so the pore pressure parameter, which is nothing but 
So u f divided by so sigma one minus sigma three into f. So uh, there are few things you can write a f when you write a f you can straight away write uh, the pore pressure at value by the derivative stress at value or alternatively so you can also write a is equals to delta u d divided by so delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3 so but predominantly when you write uh, these two forms of the equation so the f designates at failure condition so at failure you can directly take sigma 1 minus sigma 3 so what is the whatever may be the value of the d weighted stress but on the other hand uh, whenever you want to determine the a in between maybe you can directly use this equation but here the assumption is that b is equals to 1 so that fully saturated condition is maintained so use here in this equation because uf has, has been given and uh, you know sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by f so you can able to determine so af value and uh, ocr value reconsolidation pressure divided by the cell pressure Okay, so I so this is what all about uh, so small example in problems on uh, the more circuits than uh, shear strength theory, then uh, pore pressure parameters, so on and so forth. So in fact, we have also covered stress path, but uh, the pure sum on stress path I have not covered. So let us take one sum. I have emailed you the same tutorial with inclusion of one additional sum on stress path method. So kindly open your email. So check your email and uh, see for a sum on that is uh, 19th at the last one, 19th at 20th. So can anybody open and read the problem? Sir. Yeah. Sir, two cylindrical experiment. <coughs> Sir, two cylindrical specimen A and B of a soil were loaded as follow. Both experiment was isotropically loaded by a stress of 200 kilopascal under drained condition. Subsequently, the radial stress applied on specimen A was held constant and the axial stress was incrementally increased to 440 kPa under undrained condition. The axial stress on specimen B was held constant and the radial stress incrementally reduced to 50 kPa under drained condition. Plot the total and effective stress path for each specimen assuming the soil is linear isotropic elastic material. Calculate the maximum excess pore water pressure in specimen A. Very good. So, uh, 
so this is the sum so remaining people please open the tutorial and read it so there are two cylindrical specimens a and b so first at one stage so both the samples have been consolidated by applying a cell pressure of 200 kilo pascals so this is 200 kpa and here also 200 kpa so that is initial condition now subsequently the radial stress applied on specimen a was held constant in step number b so the radial stress held constant so sigma 3 is constant sigma 3 is constant and axial stress was incre incrementally increased to 4 parts per kilopascals under unrained condition so that is sigma d increased to 440 kpa 440 kpa now here a specific condition is mentioned under unrained condition so what do you mean by unrained condition here then what is the consequence of this one poor water pressure poor water pressure sir yeah so there is a development of the poor water pressure so it is some value okay on the specimen now next the axial stress on specimen b was held constant so here on b so this is 1 this is 2 here sigma d held constant sigma d held constant and radial stress incrementally reduced to 50 kilo pascals that is sigma 3 was reduced to 50 kilo pascals from the initial 200 kilo pascal from the initial 200 kilo pascal so here it is increased and here it is decreased uh, under drained condition so they are saying drained condition so here we can directly assume that delta u is zero the development of the pore pressure is zero plot the total and effective stress path for each specimen now here we will follow the stress path principle where when you talk about the stress path so we know that so they are uh, in the form of a p q r so p1 q1 so on and so forth so we also know uh, the basic definitions of these three okay so now uh, you need to determine what are the points or the coordinates in terms of the st uh, total stress path or in terms of the effective stress path and finally once we obtain these things so you need to determine what is the final pore water pressure for specimen a but for specimen b it is not possible because drained condition pore pressure is zero pore pressure is zero. so let us take one by one condition so when you talk about this one so just imagine so initially initially it is p not condition now it is increased to p1 so p1 can be written as p not plus delta p p not plus delta p. okay so based on the given the condition of this uh, axis symmetric isotropic so on and so forth so on and so forth so the delta p can be calculated as delta p and delta q so yeah. in, in this statement it is saying that axial stress is increased to 440 kpa that means it is sigma 1 right? so it is no no axial stress na deviated stress axial means deviated not sigma 1 anyway okay we will see so now uh, for the given condition the delta p is represented as so delta sigma 1 plus 2 delta sigma 3 divided by 3 so this is in x axis suppose if you draw your uh, stress path on p q or p dash q dash this is p r p dash and this is q dash so on the p q axis while delta q 
is represented as simple delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 2. So you need to remember these equations. So for cylindrical samples, so the increment of delta p will be determined using delta sigma 1 plus 2 delta sigma 3 by 3 and uh, the increment of delta q is determined using the relationship of delta sigma 1 minus so delta sigma 3. So this is formula to remember sir? Yeah, yeah, these are the formulas you need to remember. Okay, now let us look at. So, suppose you can take the, uh, the first case, step one, step one. So what is the first point? So P or P naught. So remember P or P naught is sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 and Q or Q naught is so sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2. So in this case it is isotropic loading so therefore sigma 1 is equals to sigma 3. Sigma 1 is equals to sigma 3. So this is so sigma c plus sigma c by 2. So 200 plus 200, 400 by 2. So this will become 200 kPa. While here this is 200 minus 200 by 2. So this is 0. So sigma c minus sigma c by 2. So this will become 0. So now if you draw the stress path on uh, this P and uh, P versus Q, even the very first point is 200 comma 0. So somewhere here. So this is 200 comma 0. 200 comma 0. So now you need to determine next point. So but, but for that you need to determine the delta P. So this is uh, point A is over. Now point B. So calculate delta P as a result of uh, increase in axial stress to 4 particular pascals by keeping the sigma 3 constant. So the equation for delta 3 is delta sigma 1 plus 2 into delta sigma 3 divided by 3 divided by so here sigma 3 is constant so as so as so sigma 3 is constant so we can say the delta sigma 3 is 0 Delta sigma 3 is 0. So these are the effective stresses. What I mean? So these are effective stresses, huh? Delta so sigma 1. No, no, under end condition. Under end condition. No, I know, sir. They are it's under end condition, but still. We have to take the pore pressure into account, no? No, no. You don't know the value of the pore pressure. No? You were asked to calculate. Oh, the yeah, yeah. Then. <laughs> okay. So when it is given, then we have to consider effective, na? When? Sir, when pore water pressure in under condition given. Then we have to take effective stress, yeah, no, yeah. sir? Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. If it is given, then you can take
डेल्टा सिग्मा डेल्टा So delta sigma one is two particle mass. Sir, so that's why I have told you, sir. Here sigma one is four forty kilopascal because it is increased to four forty. It is not increased by four forty. So then, if you take this is sigma one, this is two hundred. Now it is increased to four uh, forty. So four forty is multiplied by four forty. Sir, so that is four forty into four forty. Sir, so that is four forty into four forty. Sir, so that is four forty into four forty. Yeah, so this is 440 minus 200. So this is 240 kilo pascals. It is equal to 440. Okay, so now substitute here. So what you get is delta P is equal to 240 divided by 3. So that is 80 kg. Then this is for specimen A, okay. And delta Q is so delta sigma one minus delta sigma three. So delta sigma three is zero. So this is two forty kp. So delta Q is two forty kp. Okay. So now uh, go for the coordinate. So coordinates is equal to p naught plus delta p comma q naught plus delta q. So this is p naught is 200 plus delta p is 80. So this is 280 comma 0 comma 240. So 0 plus 240. So this is 280 comma 240. Is it okay? So P naught is 200 plus delta P is 80. So 200 plus 80 to 80 kilo pascal. Then Q naught is zero and delta Q is 240. So 280 comma 240. Okay. So you can draw or identify another point. You can draw like this. So this is for point A. This is 280 comma 240. For sample A. For sample. B. Similarly, you can do for sample B. So can you try to calculate for sample B? For sample B, what is delta sigma one and what is delta sigma three? What is delta sigma one and what is delta sigma three? So 
so as the axial stress is kept constant so therefore your delta sigma 1 is zero all right so you on specimen b as axial stress is kept constant so delta sigma 1 will become zero however the radial stress was decreased from 200 kilo pascals to 50 kilo pascals so therefore if you take the final minus initial so this will become minus 150 kilo pascals so be careful at the sign convention so final minus initial so 50 minus 200 minus 150 kilo pascals so now we can be able to able to calculate the delta p is equals to delta sigma 1 plus 2 delta sigma 3 divided by 2 so divided by 3 so this is nothing but 0 plus 2 into minus 150 divided by 3 so this is minus 100 kp minus 100 This is delta P. Similarly, so delta Q is equal to delta sigma one minus delta sigma three. So delta sigma one minus delta sigma. So delta sigma one is zero minus. So delta sigma three is minus one fifty. So minus one. So this will become one fifty kPa. One fifty. So coordinates So take the coordinates coordinates for sample B So first is P0 plus delta P P0 plus delta P P0 is 200 So 200 Minus delta P is minus one. So minus one, comma, comma. Q is equal to Q naught. Q naught that is zero, zero plus one fifty. So this will become so hundred, comma one fifty kilopascals. Hundred comma one fifty. So if you have any question, please do not hesitate to ask me. So this minus is for sample A. Now 100 and 150. So P is 100. So somewhere here, 150 is somewhere here. Because this is 240. So this point is 100 comma 150. 100 comma 150 per sample B. And this is for sample A, sample A and sample B. So these are part as a stress path for sample A and stress path for sample B. So now uh, let me make you understand. So the final is you are asked to determine the pore pressure, pore pressure parameter. So for that, what you need to do is you draw the vertical line from the initial stress condition, initial stress condition. Take the difference. So this is called as a the pore pressure. This is called as a the pore pressure.
so here u f is nothing but u f is nothing but so the x axis so that is 280 we have to take only x axis 280 minus 200 so 200 so 80 kilo pascals the four present developed is 80 kilo pascals the four present development is 80 kilo pascals sir yeah why have you taken a reference at a specific way a why not b why a why not b yes sir okay in b what is the drainage condition drained or unbred sir drained so there is no development of the pore water present yes sir there is no development now suppose if i ask you a question whether this line uh, so let's say uh, solution of okay so this is zero set c a c a and c b now c a is total stress path or effective stress path total stress path c a. c no no i must say CB is effective stress. Sir, so both, na? Right? Sir, both, sir, because drained condition. So effective stress path is called total stress path because there was no drainage, so there was no development of the pore water reserve. So your sigma is equal to sigma dash, or sigma dash is equal to sigma. While in this case, the path followed by the stress man A. Total stress path. Total stress path. So this is total stress path. So that's why the pore pressure can develop. So which is equal to 80 kilo pascals, which is calculated as 80 kilo pascals. Sir, in addition, some question uh, like uh, find the phi. Sir, how can we find from this? Find the pi. Yes, sir. Of specimen A. No, no. No, no, sir. I am making some questions, sir. No, no. These are the stress path. We cannot be able to determine the shear strength parameters. There is no see. Stress path means, say, for example. So just to avoid your confusion, what I am saying is I am taking your Mohr circle again. Okay. So initially, I have taken the sigma three condition, sigma three condition. So R will take. So this is the specimen. So initially sigma three everywhere, sigma three everywhere. So where is the Mohr circle? Just simple point initially. Okay, that is sigma three. Is it correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now what I will do is I will keep on increasing the sigma one component. Only sigma one component, keeping the sigma three constant. So the moment you increase, so you will get one more circle. So this is sigma one one. Then keep on increasing the another value. So sigma one two. So increase. So sigma one three. Then increase. So sigma one four. So this is how. By keeping the radial stress constant, if you increase only the axial stress. So this is how you will obtain the more circles. And how long I can able to increase the axial stress until until you are reaching the Mohr Coulomb failure angle? Say for example, this is the Mohr Coulomb failure angle. 
so this is the condition so this is 15 so this is mohar kolum pelur alula okay so you can increase the axial stress until your shear strength is becoming equal to the shear stress is becoming equal to the shear strength shear strength but what path it is following that will be identified by drawing the stress path how for that purpose you just identify the points of the maximum shear stress points of the maximum shear stress then try to join all these points so try to join all these points so this is called as a stress path this is called as a stress path is it clear to everyone now so stress path is different than your mohar coulomb failure angular your stress path nothing to do with your c value pi value but it shows how the load increment is happening is it in a linear way or non linear way or is it following the total stress path or the effective stress path everything can be able to understand when you draw the stress path okay so now uh, suppose say So now let us look at another condition. Say for example, I have taken another sample. Another sample. So this is tau. So this is sigma. So initially I have done the total stress analysis. So I obtain the Mohr circle in terms of the total stress. So this is sigma one and this is sigma three. Sigma three. But I allow the dissipation of the pore water present. i allowed the dissipation of the pore water present so as a result so there was a shift in the stresses from the total to the effective so how do you draw the effective mohr circle again so when you draw the mohr circle in terms of the effective stresses so there is a shift so this will become sigma 3 dash and this will become sigma 1 dash so your net is your net is the decrease in the pore water pressure decrease in the pore water pressure or you can say either uf or delta u whatever you want the difference between sigma 1 dash and sigma 1 always indicate so how much decrement in the pore water pressure. but suppose say you are keep on measuring the pore water pressure condition now how do you arrive at so this condition to this condition say for example here it is stress pump suppose if you do the undrained analysis alone undrained analysis alone so you will get stress path something like this only so this we can say the total stress path total stress path or in short it is written as tsp total stress path total stress path. now just imagine so after the increment of the every load you are also measuring the pore pressure parameter pore pressure parameter now what will happen so your stress path will follow the different route so in that case this is the total stress path so your stress path will be something like this so this is called as a effective stress path effective stress path now here if you take any difference between these two between total and effective so that will indicate the change of the pore water present the change of the pore water okay is it clear now so this is total stress path suppose if you allow after application of the each load dissipation of the pore water present so then there is a change in the values of the sigma 3 and sigma 1 so as a result so your mohr circle will totally shift
the total is six. So something like this. So this is part power by the effective stress. So total stress and effective stress. So in the previous sum, we try to suppose if you are asked to draw so many number of more circles, it is a daunting task. Okay. So you need to draw so many number of more circles, then identify the peaks, then connect all the peaks. That will give you the stress part, whether it is total or effective. So therefore, the easiest way of drawing the stress path without drawing the more circle is by simply calculating the values of the P. That is sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 and Q that is sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2. So no way we are compromising the basic definition of a stress path. Stress path is a path which, is, which connects the topmost points of all the more circles. Okay. So, is it clear now? Or, suppose if it's still not clear, just imagine, if I take any of this point on the stress path, any of this on the stress path, you know, if I draw the horizontal line as well as the vertical line. So this is nothing but your sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2, which is nothing but P. Okay, similarly, from here to here. So from here to here. So this is nothing but your so sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2, which is nothing but Q. So, if I calculate P and Q, which inherently indicates the apex point of each Mohr circle. And if I connect all the apex points, so that gives the stress path directly. So, therefore, I don't need to draw each and every Mohr circle. If I calculate P and Q, and if I make a line, that itself is your stress path. So I hope you understood the convenience between drawing the Mohr circle and identifying the stress path or converting directly in the form of a P and Q. So this is also written in terms of S and T, both are same. So P and T are same because in our uh, tutorial, in some of the sums, it is shown draw the stress path in terms of the S and T. So both are same. Okay, so maybe tomorrow I can able to explain you uh, the basic difference between where uh, it should be represented in terms of the P and Q and where it should be represented in S and T. So tomorrow we have a one class. So I will try to cover up only the stress path theory. Sir. Yeah. Sir, in question, they mentioned the pore water pressure. Then we will make the effective stress, stress path, no, sir? No. When you talk about the effective stress path, power pressure is zero. Yes, sir. So, so we will to... never make, sir. See, sir. try to understand. Unless we have a total, hey, see, there are three parameters. Total stress path, effective stress path, and the power pressure. Suppose if you are asked to calculate the power pressure, you need to have a total stress path and effective stress path balance. So without having any two, you cannot able to determine the third one, unless you have another way of doing it. Means in, in summary, sir, we can say uh, to determine the CH test parameter, we go for more circle. And to determine the pore water pressure, we go for stress path. No, no, <laughs> nothing like that. Your stress path, see, stress path means path followed when you impose the axial load in a systematic way. <laughs> it's not only the pore water pressure. You need to understand what path it follows. 
suppose say you are following the stress path, total stress path. So you can impose the load until so this path is meeting the uh, amount of failure. But when you go for the total stress path, this will never meet the amount column failure angular because even before reaching the tau max, you are already reaching the tau f. Okay, but if you go for effective stress path, we can easily reach directly more column failure angular. So that is the beauty of going for the stress path. Okay, so I will stop it here. You and if you have any question, you are most welcome to ask me. Anybody has any question? 